I invite you now in this moment to be that open channel for love. If you feel so inclined, go ahead and take a nice deep cleansing breath in, receiving the cool, calm oxygen that's around you. And as you release the breath, Release all stress and tension that may be in your body. Give all worries and doubts back to the one that has all the answers. Take another nice, deep, cleansing breath in, holding it. And as you release this breath, allow your body to just relax in this moment and allow your mind to be here now. Universal love enfolds me. Universal wisdom inspires me. Universal spirit enlightens me. Universal power encircles me. I am one and all is well. As we begin this inner healing process, let me invite you to relax in quiet confidence, opening yourself to the miracle working higher power. Now symbolize the unity of your thinking and feeling nature by touching your chest with your hand and let my words act as your own. For your own inner healing, acceptance, and receptivity. I acknowledge that there is a power, intelligence, and wisdom greater than my own. I am in the midst of it, and it is in the midst of me, sensitive and responsive to my every thought, word, action, and feeling. I now make this true for myself by saying aloud, I acknowledge Acknowledging this higher power working through my life, I admit that I am personally responsible for solving my own problems while being guided and assisted by something greater than myself. As I am ready to surrender the conflicts of my ego to the wisdom of this infinite presence, I simply speak these words, I surrender. I surrender. Knowing that forgiveness is the key to unconditional love and the feeling of heaven, I now unconditionally forgive anyone and everyone who has ever injured me in any way, real or imagined. And I now forgive myself for all of my mistaken judgments and their resulting actions. From my deepest level of understanding, I now say, I forgive. I forgive. Realizing that I continually experience the effects of my own thinking I now choose to allow this higher power to recreate me deeply, filling my mind with thoughts that are only positive, constructive, loving, and beautiful. I call upon this divine inflow by stating aloud, I choose. I now center upon that one special idea 
that I'm willing to accept as real for me in this coming week. Visualizing that idea as already acted upon and brought to pass. In seeing my idea become a fact of my experience, I enjoy the happiness and peace of my thought fulfilled and gratefully speak these words. I accept. knowing that I have an everlasting place in the midst of the power that sustains all creation, as well as the support of all those around me, I allow myself to relax in the peace of fulfillment and gratitude and say, I release. I release. Now, in my mind's eye, I envision the presence of someone near and dear to me. This can be a friend, a family member, a teacher or mentor, someone who has touched my life in deep and loving ways. Someone who may not be physically present in the room with me this morning. I turn toward that image in my mind's eye and say, I'm grateful for the good in your life. Now I open my eyes, turn to the world around me, and joyfully speak to anyone physically present in this room or virtually on this broadcast and share in confidence and gratitude and saying, I'm grateful for the good in your lives. Uh, good morning, Creative Life. Give yourselves a big hand. I don't know how y'all can contain yourself behind that powerful song. I, I, I just don't know. You would have to have an idea of something better. You'd have to have a picture or an image. And a song like that just connects you to that this or that something better. So help me um, give Jeffrey and the males a big hand as well as Mary. I don't know if y'all heard Mary over on the tambourine. Uh, yeah, she just jumped right in and that's what good music sounds like. I am excited to be here with you today and I have a short message that hopefully will land. And definitely those of you that are watching online, it is our desire that you would be entreated by the expressions of today. Jesse has been leading and guiding us in this dynamic experience of Ralph Waldo, as Jesse said, he liked to be called Waldo. Ralph Waldo Emerson, and it has been very enlightening as well as empowering. So we wanna thank Jesse for leading us in that regard, and some good things just don't stop, right? Uh, because I remember, I think it was the first message and afterwards Jesse said he was going to do a survey if y'all remember of if you wanted the Emerson series to continue y'all remember and uh, he came back and said there were three people who said yes so if you were to look in your bulletin we have Emerson coming back again in August so I'm excited to hear what Jesse has to say about Emerson and I'm like Jesse you know that's very powerful because even if no one else votes, me, myself, and I, that's always three, me, myself, and I, right? Absolutely, so I'm not saying that Jesse did it. I'm not saying that Jesse did that. I know that there were three people, right, that said, hey, keep the series going because there is so much that Emerson has to share with us, and we have indeed been fortunate to receive in that regard. So the title of my talk today, my lesson today, is I want to say a very um, challenging one, but it's perhaps also 
a very encouraging one as well. And that's what the life experience is all about. It's about to be challenged and to be encouraged to know that there is more. Someone say more. more. Okay. There is more in store for you. There is more in store for you. I didn't say for me. I said for you. Because each and every one of us have to make that declaration. As the song says, I think I, I know it. I, I claim it. And I have it right now. Come on, can everybody say that? Say, I know it. I claim it, and I have it. Yeah, you go ahead and start clapping right there. Because it says right now, because if Ralph Waldo Emerson was here, he would simply say this, that once a decision is made, the universe conspires to do what? To make it happen, to make it happen exactly. I know I'm in good country. I, I, I was just kind of playing, filling the blank. I knew you all knew the answer, right? Because uh, you all are good students of wisdom and uh, metaphysical truth. So yes, that's what Ralph Waldo Emerson said. Once a decision is made, the universe can conspires with you to make it happen. So the question that I ask you sitting here today, the question that I ask you that are watching online, and you're probably eating breakfast, so you may be at brunch, but uh, we appreciate you having us in view. But the question is, what decision have you made? Because if the universe conspires, right, to make it happen, if it has not happened, have we perhaps not made a decision, or have we made a decision? Because it didn't say multiple choice. It said a decision. And there's a astute difference between multiple choice and multiple decision. In school, how many of y'all took a multiple decision test? No, no. I think we just, uh, we have a college graduate that just graduated, right? Yeah, exactly. Although I'm not in the building, I'm in the building. Trust me, I'm in the building. I have, wherever I am in the world, I'm tuning in, so I'm in the building. So we have a recent graduate here, and she would tell us that there were no multiple decision tests. There were multiple choice tests, but a decision stands alone because the decision comes from the Latin word kaidir, which simply means to cut off. So when I make a decision, I cut myself off from any other alternative. So now since we've laid some groundwork, some foundation, now we can ask the question again, what decision have I made or did I make a choice? Because with a choice, you can always go back and change it. You can always go back and erase it. You can always waffle with it and waver with it and perhaps do nothing with it. Because have y'all ever had those tests? She probably could attest to this. Some of us have been out of school quite a while. We just couldn't come up with the choice. We just couldn't make an answer, and we left it blank. We didn't even want to take our chances of 50, 50, 30, 30. We just left it blank. We just got a plain zero on that one. Maybe that was just me. <laughs> yeah, we, we have, right, right. If we, we, can, we can have confession session and just tell the truth that we've probably all done that because those choices just tend to ah, convolute our thinking process. But once we make a decision, we have no more choices to make. One wise person said it like this Many of us uh, think we have problems, but we really don't have as many problems as we have decisions to make because once we make the decision, the problem takes care of itself. Ah. Once we make the decision, the problem takes care of itself. So we don't really have as many problems as we do. We have decisions to make, but because we have not made a decision, it appears as a problem. Because once a decision is made, the choices now fall in line. Because I've decided to be fit, now my choices are easy. Because I've made a decision to be fit. Or maybe I haven't made a decision to be fit. <laughs> or maybe you have. You're like, okay, Arthur, I clearly understand. But once you've made a decision to be loving, when a situation comes, you don't have to choose, do I love or not love? I, I've made a decision. So the choice is now dictated by the decision that I made. Because remember, once you make a decision, someone say decision. decision. The universe conspires to make it happen. I just want to read something with you and share the power of decision as we 
launch into and continue our conversation around today's topic, which is decision, the power to change. Decision, the power to change. And it very well could be decision, the pathway to change. Because once we make the decision, it sets the direction and destiny of our life experience. Hmm. Once again, it's all about decision. I'm going to share something with you. And I'm not promoting any establishment, any business enterprise. But as I was researching for today's talk, something very interesting came across my consciousness. I said, okay, I need to perhaps talk about this. So I was looking to replace a watch. Watch I have on, I was looking to replace it. So I went online to a particular vendor to look for a watch. And I, I tend to look at reviews. I was replacing the same watch, but I just happened to like reading reviews. So this review struck me, and I'm going to share it with you just so that we can understand the power, Jeffrey, the power of making a decision, making a decision, and perhaps that decision causing us to, to have more, causing us to get that which we have professed, to get that which we have claimed, because we are now working in concert, Ken, with the universe. It says this, his name is J.D. Meyer. So, J.D., if you're out there somewhere watching, I'm not using this to punish you. I'm just using this to help us learn here in Houston, Texas, about the power of decision. And if we make a decision, the things that we have decided have a way of showing up in our lives. So, J.D., I want to thank you in advance. So it simply says this, J.D. Meyer, verified purchase, review in the United States on January 27th, 2021. He says, this was a birthday gift to myself. I gave my wife a Movado maybe 30 years ago, and that's the type of watch you're talking about, about 30 years ago, and always thought, Reverend Lisa, I would get one in return. Absolutely amazing. This was a birthday gift to myself. I gave my wife a Movado maybe 30 years ago and always thought I would get one in return, period. Here's the next sentence. Here's the next sentence. Decided to stop waiting. <laughs> I have many watches. This has a good large aspect. I changed out the buckle for deployment. 30 years. He waited to receive a watch in return that he had given out. He then says, decided to stop waiting. Did y'all hear that? He said it was 30 years he was waiting to get this in return. But once he decided to stop waiting, the thing that he had waited 30 years for had a magical way of showing up. <laughs> But it wasn't magical at all. It was the universe now, right, conspiring, right, to make happen what he had decided. And he thought his watch had to come from the hands of his wife, but really the watch had to come from the hands of his own decision. So I asked the question, ah, 30 years is a long time, and yes, y'all know, um, I got to get out of here already. As y'all know, I'm a Bible teacher, right? I love the Bible, right? I'm talking about what went on. And that was this man who, uh, he had a condition for 38 years. And he waited a long time. And it just seems like something.
being someone always got in front of him before he could get what he wanted. And when he was even questioned about it, he began to give all these reasons of why it had not happened. And then the master teacher, the healer, uh, said, well, okay, just pick up your mat and walk. Just, pick, just make a decision and move forward. So I asked us the question again. J.D. Meyer said, you know, I got tired of waiting because I was about to run out of time. Did y'all get that? He got tired of waiting because he knew the clock was still ticking and he had waited long enough. Someone say long enough. Long enough. And he made a decision to have the very thing that he desired. Because once we make a decision, the universe conspires to make it happen. So I have to ask myself, what decision have I made? And as you all know, that quote came from Ralph Waldo Emerson. I guess we could call it a Ralphism or Waldoism. But, 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 but yes, Ralph said, once you make a decision, the universe conspires to make it happen. So the question is, what decision have I made? What decision have I made? What true decision have I made where I cut off all other options? I have cut off all excuses. And I have said, this is the decision. This is what I'm going to be. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to have, and I will have it no other way. What decision have we made? Because once we make a decision, guess what? Things begin to happen. Would you agree? Yes, yes absolutely. Absolutely. And the lack of decision keeps things as they are. I have to give us the other side of the coin. Yeah, because the reason why he had never gotten a watch, because he never looked within himself to say, well, maybe I need to buy my own watch. Maybe I need to create my own joy, my own happiness, my own success, because I understand that the greater one is working inside of me. And the greater one working inside of me makes me a majority. So that means I have everything that I need to get to attract, to bring into my experience everything I want. But I have to know what it is that I want. What decision have you made? In the chat box, in the comment box online, if you know what decision you've made, why don't you just put it in there? Because see, if I ask everybody in here, we'll all start talking at the same time. But see, <laughs> but online, you can just like put it in, and somebody can put a heart on it, somebody can put a thumbs up on it, and uh, we can still kind of keep rolling. But that's the operative question today. And if I have not made a decision, today is today. You're in the right place at the right time to hear the right message to make the right decision. And if you say, well, hey, Arthur, that's not for me, okay, that's fine. Remember JD. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you remember nothing else from today's talk, yeah, 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 just remember JD Meyer and keep waiting and wondering why it hasn't happened, why it hasn't manifested. Maybe because I really have not aligned myself. I've not lined up with what I need to line up with in order to draw it into my experience. But once I line up, everything else line up. Oftentimes we're waiting on God, and God's like, I'm waiting on you. <laughs> What's your problem? I've given you everything you need. Decisions. The power to change. So what decision do you need to make today? So let me just ask a question real quick. And um, you just think about it quickly. Because time and JD, you're right, we'll be mindful of time now. Is there a decision that you need to make? that can change, alter, and improve your life experience. Right here and right now, is there a decision that you need to make or can make that will change, alter, or improve your life experience? Huh. And the reason I ask that question, is, let me just get a show of hands and online if there is a decision that you can make that will change, alter, and improve your life. I just want you to just type in the box, yes. Just type yes. But those of you that are in here that I asked the question, if there is a decision that you can make that will change, alter, and or improve your life, right here and right now, raise your hand. Okay. Okay, for the most part, that's everybody. <laughs> that, 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 that's everybody. That's everybody. That's everybody. So in order, Tom, for that to come about, we would have to exercise.
execute on that decision. Because it's not enough just to say, I can make a decision. We have to make that decision. And you know why we have to make that decision? Because we have another great thought, great quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson. He said this, the only person that you are destined to become is the person that you decide to be. Ah, Jeffrey, that's, that, that, Ralph, that, and it was in 1841, over 182 years ago. That was powerful talk. He didn't have social media. Probably didn't even have a mail for that matter. <laughs> but, but, but he wrote something that says the only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. There's that word again, decide. So that means not only my decisions decide my destiny, who I'll become, J.D. would say it also decides and determines what you'll have. Hmm. A decision. Not only will it determine what we are able to be and to have, it will also determine what we do. Because if we don't make a decision, nothing happens. Because if we tell ourselves, I can't do this, chances are you're not going to be able to do that. If you tell yourself, I can't have that, chances are you will not have that. Because that's the decision that you have made. So what I want to do real quickly is, remember, we're talking about decisions. Someone say decisions. decisions. Okay. We're going to talk about decisions, the pathway to change, the power to change. And what I want to do is share what I would call four steps, four principles, four practices that will help us perhaps get that thing that we said we know we needed to do in order to make our life better. Because you all raise your hand. And you all say, you know what, Reverend Arthur, there is something that I can do that will change, alter, and or improve my life, Mary. We all said that. And if we are living and that is not our desire to be more, do more, and have more, if that's not the decision that we are looking to enact, my question would be why? Why wouldn't you want to be all you can be? The Army, they brought back, as y'all know, I'm military, not Army, Air Force, but they brought back that slogan. Nothing wrong. I was ten, two years Army, eight years Air Force, but they brought back that slogan, be all you can be. Be all you can be, because they had stopped utilizing it at a point in time, but they have brought it back as a slogan now, as a recruiting marketing tool. But I think that's a very operative statement. Every morning, I should be waking up with the desire to be all I can be that particular day, to be better than I was the day before, because that's what we call a growth mindset, a growth mindset, because I always know I can be more. And I know that if I be more, I can do more. And if I know I can do more, I can have more. And if I know I can have more, I can give more. I can bless more. I can share more because I'm being more. I call it the more consciousness. The more consciousness. Because there is no limit to what God can do in us and through us if we make the decision, right, to be all that we can be. So the very first thing that we must do Reverend David, if we're going to look at this operative word decision and execute the power that's behind it, we have to disrupt our feelings about what's not working in our life. We have to disrupt our feelings about what perhaps is not right in our life. We have to disrupt our feelings about perhaps what's lacking in our life. Because if we don't disrupt our feelings, we have no energy to work with around our experience. Because the way things are, the reason that things are the way they are now is because we're okay with them being the way they are right now. We feel like everything's okay and nothing will change until we change. Because JD said, I got to the point that I was no longer comfortable with not having the watch that I wanted. So I had to take matters in my own hand. So I asked the question, what area of our lives do we need to disrupt some things? What area of our lives do we need to stir some things up, stir some emotions up around a situation? Because once we get like, ah, sick and tired of being sick and tired, things begin to change. 
That, that comes from J.D. That, that, that didn't come from me. That came from J.D. Meyer. I just got sick and tired because I saw her with her watch day in and day out, and I never had my watch because I was waiting for her to give me my watch. He got sick and tired of being sick and tired. So he decided that I'm going to have a watch. So once again, I asked the question to you. I posed the question to you. What is it in my life that I need to shake up, that I need to, uh, like, stir it up? Uh, maybe like stirring up some walls or some bees. I know they're kind of active in this time of year, and, and they'll sting you. But once you stir your emotions up, guess what? Something's now about to happen. Because emotion is simply energy in motion, Tom. Energy in motion, Tom. Energy in motion. So the question I ask y'all out there in Internet land, hmm, what area, what situation, what circumstance that you need to just kind of hmm, poke it? I call it like poking the bear. Once you wake the bear up, Ah, things are about to happen. So in your life, what and where do you need to wake up that belief? You need to poke that belief. You need to poke that belief. That's what I mean when I say poking the bear. You're poking that belief, that belief in you, the belief in the God in you, that things can change, things will change when I make a decision for them to change. Hmm, something to think about. So you need to, once again, Make a decision that I'm going to disturb my feelings. I'm going to disturb my emotions about what's not right in my life. Because it's in those moments that our destiny is shaped. It's in those moments, Kim, that our destiny is shaped and our direction is set. In those moments. When a committed decision has been made, things begin to happen. So let me just kind of do a quick assessment, quick analysis. I'll just have you to ask yourself this question. And you may just say self. It's like self-interrogation. Self-interrogation. What are you not happy about? I'm trying to get some tall tale signs. What are you not happy about? What have you had enough of? What do you want more of? You're talking to yourself because you're trying to disturb, disrupt uh, those stagnant emotions that are just okay with the way things are. And self, what do you want to be different? What do you want to look different? Because if a decision is never made, things will always look the same. But once a decision is made, things now begin to change. And we know a decision has to be made because, once again, Master teacher, master healer passes by, had these blind men, and they're calling him, shouting out, hey, 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 master, master. He said, hey, okay, you've got my attention. What do you want me to do for you? He already knew what the situation was, but he asked them, what do you want me to do for you? And they said, well, hey, we, uh, I want to see. I want my side back. And he said this, so powerful. He said, hmm, receive your sight. Your faith has heal you. Receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. But they made a decision to identify what they needed. Because remember, they were blind and they were beggars. So they really had two issues going on. They couldn't see and they did not have any money. <laughs> but they said, let me see and I'll be able to create my own money. So you have to know what's greatest in your life that will move the needle, that will, call your, that will cause your life experience to become better. And that's what you need to make a decision on. And once you make that decision, guess what? What did Ralph Waldo say? Once a decision is made, what happens? The universe conspires to make it happen. So the universe is wanting it to happen for you, but you have to want it for yourself. Which is why the master teacher says, hey, what do you want me to do for you? So maybe you're going to have to have a conversation with self and get self in check. Say, we were built for more than this. We were built for better than this, David. We're still breathing. We're still living. We are to be living life. Hmm. Once again, J.D. said, you know what, I'm tired of wearing this Timex. I've waited, yeah, I've waited 30 years. I need to have my type of watch, my brand of watch, because I deserve it. I deserve it. So you need to disrupt your feelings and decide on what you want to change. You must decide on what you want to change. And the second thing that you must do, after you've disrupted your feelings, after you've decided that you want 
change that you want to change, you must decide, I must change. And then you must decide, it must change. Because here we go deep metaphysical. Everything is created twice. First mental and then physical. So if out here is going to change, in here has to change. Am I in good country? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, because when the inside changes, the outside changes now to conform to the inside. So if I change me, everything else around me changes. Because when J.D. changed how he looked at that situation, the situation changed and he did something different. It, it wasn't that the situation changed. He changed and then he changed the situation by taking back his power and exercising it. So the second thing that we must do after we've decided that, hey, I must change, it must change, after I've now become uncomfortable with the way I've been feeling about this situation, the second thing that I must do is I must outline, I must outline a plan of action to change. I must outline a plan of action to change. Because it's not enough just to say, hey, I'm going to change. Woo-wee! <laughs> Everybody says it on January the 1st. Yeah, I'm going to change. It's going to change. Okay, how? Wow. I never thought about that. <laughs> Which is the reason why most efforts don't last. They don't stick because there was never a plan of action executed. It was just a lot of emotional enthusiasm, which tends to wane if we don't have a plan. So they didn't have anything to follow. So you must outline a plan of action to change that what you said you could change, that needed to change in order to make life better. We need to have a plan of action. So here's perhaps what the plan of action needs to consist of. What will you accomplish? When will you accomplish it? And what actions will you take to accomplish it? Hmm. That begins the operative plan. What will you accomplish? When will you accomplish it? And what actions will you take? Because I'm sure that J.D. Meyer said, you know what? There's a watch out there for me. And I'm going to put a plan together to go and get it. I'm sure he didn't just land on this particular website looking at this particular list of goods. He probably had a plan. I'm going to have it by this point in time. And this is what I'm going to do to get it. And lo and behold, that was a watch at just the right price waiting for him to come to it. But it was there all the time. But he, he had just said, I'm going to get a new watch. 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 And he probably said that for 29 years, 364 days. <laughs> and then when it got to year number 30, he's like, I've had it. I've had it. He goes online, and it happens in a matter of probably a couple of hours, if that. Yeah. Everything we need already exists. We just need to get in alignment with it, and then we bring it into our experience. We have to tune in. Well, turn on. Tune in and turn up the volume. You have to turn the radio on first. <laughs> you have to turn on the belief first, right? Then you have to tune in to the frequency of what you want, and then you just have to turn it up, and I'm going to tell you how to turn it up before we go. Okay, okay, okay. So the reason I want you to write it down is because writing your plan gives visible form to your invisible future. Writing it down gives visible form to your invisible future because without that, it's just out there. You can't really connect with it. But once you write it down, something happens when the pen and the paper come together. I believe magic happens. And the wise writer said it like this. He said, write the vision down. Make it plain so the one that reads it can run with it. Can run with it, right? Because you're running for the goal line. You're running for the gold medal. You're running for that. <laughs> that what? He probably showing his wife. Mm -hmm. You thought I couldn't manifest it. And mine is newer than yours. Okay, let me stop playing. Let me stop playing. Let me stop playing. Let me stop playing. And the reason that we want to write it down, because once again, as I said, writing it down gives visible form to our invisible future. This is a note that I have. This is a quote by Arthur Johnson. It simply says this, that every change in life is preceded by a committed decision and a clear plan of action. 
a committed decision and a clear plan of action. A committed decision. I didn't say choice. Because remember that multiple choice it'll get you every time. But once you make a decision, you don't have any other options or choices left. It's just that. JD said, hey, I made a decision that I didn't want the Timex anymore. I didn't want the Swiss anymore. I wanted this, and that's what he got. So every change in life is preceded by a clear decision. Uh, yeah. Committed decision and a clear plan of action. So number, well, sub point, sub point, and then we're, we're going to run on. After you've written this plan, what we want to do is make some decisions about the plan. Make some decisions about the plan. Because remember, we work in concert with God. We co-create with source. So you don't have to do it by yourself. So what you want to do is once you've created this plan, once you've outlined this plan, you want to decide to offer your plan to God. To offer your plan to God. To offer your plan to the universe. And you said, why would we do that, Arthur? Well, simply this. Solomon says this in Proverbs 16 and 3. He says, ask the Lord to bless your plans, and you will be successful in carrying them out. Wow. Oh, I don't have to do it by myself? I, I have a plan, and, and I can have my greater source to help me? It will bless it? Yes. He says, ask the Lord to bless your plans and you will be successful in carrying them out. So not only must we decide to offer our plan to God, we must decide to operate our plan with God. Not only offer it to God because he's going to bless it, but we must operate with God. Take a look at yourself. Why did you say that? Hmm. Matthew 19 and 26 says this. The master teacher looked at them and said, hey, you know what? With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So with God working with me, my plan cannot help but succeed. Yeah, because it's uh, me and God, me and Source. We're moving, we're jabbing, we're finding discounts, we're getting a hunch here, we're getting a hint there, and we're moving in alignment with the good that we desire. And the reason we must have a plan, because people don't plan to fail, they just fail to plan, and by default, they fail. So if we work these steps, I guarantee you the change that we desire will come about. Thirdly, 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 you must implement your plan. You must implement your plan. When? Immediately. Someone say immediately. Immediately. Yes, because why would you wait? What, what, why would we wait? If we have the ideal plan, why would we wait until next year or to next month or to next week? What, what can we do today? Yeah, that's the true sign that a committed decision has been made, which is to take action. So what can I do today? Nothing happens until you do something, but you must do something different. Nothing happens until you do something, but you must do something different. And that's why we've taken time to create this plan. And we're not just out there doing anything, but we're doing the thing that we know will get us to where we desire to go. It becomes really a matter of science. As the old saying goes, to keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result is called what? Insanity. Insanity. I, I, I see those online. They've already put it in the uh, comment box. Yeah, it's insanity to keep doing the same thing and uh, expect to get a different result. JD will tell us, you know what? I kept thinking that she was going to get me a watch and I was about to drive myself crazy and I realized that I was the solution to my own watch situation. Yeah, so he made a decision to do something different. We must be willing to do something different. Why? Because Solomon says this, all hard work produces a profit. All hard work produces a profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. Don't just talk about it. We have to be about it. We have to walk the talk. Yes, he says, all hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. So we can't just talk about, oh, I made a decision. Oh, we can't just talk about, oh, I have a plan. No, we have to work the plan. And by default, things begin to happen. You have to develop a now attitude. Someone say now. now. Say I must. I must. Develop, Develop. A, now a now attitude. That's if we really want something to change. Now, if you don't, hey, I understand. 
I understand. I understand. I really do. But if you do want something to change, when is the best time for change to happen? Okay, no trick question. When is the best time for change to happen? Now, absolutely. Now. Now, because if not, next week, next month, next year, things are going to still be the same because I didn't do anything. But if I did something, at least I now have something to be hopeful about because I put some different energy and action out into the universe. I've given God something to work with. And working with God can create miracles. I'm a firm believer of that. Lastly, lastly, so not only must we decide, not only must we outline a plan, not only must we implement the plan immediately, the last thing that I want us to do is to think about your change decision all the time. Think about your change decision all the time. Think about it and talk about it consistently. You're thinking about it to yourself, you're talking about it to yourself. I didn't ask you to go and share with everybody else. If you have a trusted confidant that you can share it with, by all means do. But if not, trust me, there is a trusted confidant within you that wants to hear all about it. So I would encourage you to perhaps just talk to you about it and just show everybody else. Yeah, 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 because everybody else don't want to change, and they're going to try and talk you out of your change decision. Yeah, so you just talk to yourself about it, and you just show them. Would y'all not agree? I think that's good wisdom. I think that's good wisdom, because more people have tried to talk me out of conquering the world. <laughs> well, I really do. I want to conquer my world, not everybody else's world, you know? I'm not trying to be Napoleon. I'm just trying to be author. But I want to be in control of my domain. I want to be in control of my world and not have anybody else or anything else control it. I want to own my power and not give my power to anything or anyone else. I want to conquer my world. And you should too. It's yours. It's yours. So we want to decide to think and talk about our change decision consistently. So Ray and Kierkegaard said this. He says, our life always expresses the results of our dominant thoughts. Mm. Our life always expresses the results of our dominant thoughts. So what you think about, you bring about. What you think about, you bring about. If something's showing up, you got to see, okay, what did I have to do with this? If something is not showing up, what did I have to do with this? Because our internal thoughts are creating our external reality. This is graduate level work. This is graduate level work. But once we get it, we get to graduate into the higher level of life because we take ourselves there. So not only must we decide to think and talk about our change decision consistently, lastly, we must decide to inspect and improve our results regularly. Decide to inspect and improve our results regularly. Because I don't know if JD landed on that watch on the first search could have but evidently he got to it because i believe he continued to inspect and improve his results his research efforts because the watch was always there waiting so we want to take notice of what's working and what's not working as we're seeking to create change because success in life is the re result of gradually striving to do better each and every day Success is a result of gradually striving to do better each and every day. And I think Robert Collier said it best, success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. Success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. If we take care of the day, the dream, the goal, the desire takes care of itself. So this is what we've shared. I've actually spelled something for us. Uh, and it simply spells do it. Do it. Decide that it needs to change, you need to change. 
outline or a plan of action for change. Not just a plan, but a plan of action for change. I implement the plan of action immediately, right now. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next year, but right now. And lastly, T, think about your change decision, your change actions all the time. And you're with you all the time. Think about it and talk about it. Because in my last words, and they're the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson, he says this, a man is what he thinks about all day long. Let us know together, let us pray. We're grateful for this moment. We're grateful for this time. We're grateful for the words that have been shared. We're grateful for spirit speaking into our experience. It is my hope, my desire, my innermost prayer that these words have fallen on fertile hearts and receptive minds that truly desire to see a better experience of life, a better experience of health, a better experience of joy, a better experience of living. We're grateful for all that has been bestowed upon us. We're grateful for the power that has been placed within us. Help us to come into full recognition and realization of you. We thank you, God, for the many things that have been done on our behalf to bring us to this point. We thank you for giving us what we need in order to go further. It is our desire, our prayer, that you would continue to speak to us, live in us, and show up as us, that we collectively might have this great experience of abundant life. Because we know that it is in you that we live and move and have our being. There is no place we can go that you are not. And we thank you for your ever presence. And where your presence is, there's power. And where your power is, there's progress. So we say thank you for all that you've done. Amen? And so it is. So it is. And for everyone else, thank you for being back. We do appreciate your presence. We appreciate your love and your energy. We appreciate your financial donations and all the support that you give us. It is because you are here and giving to us that we can give back to you. So thank you so much for everything you give. And I invite you now to say with me, divine love through me, blesses and multiplies all the good I am and have, all the good I give and receive. I am prosperous now, and so it is. Take a minute. And let's talk about that fire for a minute. Let's talk about that fire. I know fire can be kind of scary. I'm a fire sign. I love that idea. But here's what I want to remind you. When we talk about this fire that burns within you, your wick that burns is dipped in an infinite well. There will never, that will never run out of fuel. It will burn forever. So join me in that, in the knowing that there is one power one presence, one life, one love. We are the physical manifestation of that presence. That power flows through us. We live that life. And we are the channel for that love into this world. It is through us that all things happen. And yes, we are always a choice. But we have to make that decision. And today, I choose 
to burn bright because I know that I am connected to an infinite source that responds to my every decision and makes the way plain for me that smooths the way and makes things happen. And I know that that spirit burns within you. So let your wick drop deep, draw that infinite source up, know that what you ask for, you will receive. And the divine guidance to get you there is ever available and always just within reach. Spirit will never leave you. Spirit can't leave you because you are spirit. You are held in the arms of the beloved. And I'm grateful to know that. And I am grateful for a teaching that teaches me this. And I am grateful for a teaching that teaches me who I am and who you are. And I am grateful for this place, this community, for each and every one of you that we come together to burn brightly and to light the darkness. And I'm grateful for our ministers and our musicians and our ministers, practitioners. And I'm grateful for Reverend Arthur, who blew the roof off. So we'll get it put back on for Jesse next week. <laughs> and I'm grateful because grateful gratitude is just another word for love. And that, my friends, is the ultimate power in the universe. And so I relax and I release into love, into the law, knowing that it is done. And so it is. Say it with me now. Something wonderful is happening through me. Something wonderful is happening through me. I feel it in my body. I feel it in my body. I feel it in my mind. I feel it in my mind. I feel it in everything I am. I choose it. I trust it. I use it. And I love it. And so it is.